Barclay Castle stands proud in the Gloucestershire landscape close to the border with England and Wales. During its 900 year history, kings and queens have spent time at the castle and in the buildings out on the estate. It was built as a hunting lodge for, for hunting deer. And I mean, who knows, maybe Elizabeth I was in this one. Right, Because yeah. she came to hunt deer at Barclay. Estate buildings and the 18th century kitchen garden at Barclay are now being renovated and repurposed for life in the 21st century and beyond. I do believe it's so important and there is a need for something like this and uh, I think it will be very good for the community and for visitors. Hello and thank you so much for joining me here in the drawing room at Maverton. The landscapes and estate buildings of these glorious historic houses I visit across the UK have fascinating histories of their own. And one feature I've long been intrigued by are follies. Dominating the landscape in the Deer Park on the Barclay Estate is the most spectacular folly. To find out more, I met up with Charles Barkley and estate director, Michelle Bolivar. And here we are heading up to this fantastic folly in the middle of the deer park. Follies were used for, I mean, why were they built? I mean, I know there are several well, reasons, but... Yeah, lots of reasons. I mean, this one in particular is more of kind of a hunting lodge, so it's actually quite big for a folly. Um, lots of them were just eye catchers. They were places to look to on the horizon so right. that you had kind of, you could show off kind of where you were going and had a point to kind of go somewhere for an indoor picnic, I suppose, as you were having a nice adventure around the estate. Right. The building was started in 1805. Um, and yes. then it took quite a few years to, to complete. So right. some follies are just like one room with a pretty view or whatever, or an eye catcher to kind of ride to or, or walk to. Um, whereas this actually has um, three big rooms, which we'll go and have a look at. Um, so yeah, it's, this is quite large right, compared right. to a lot. So Charles, I mean, really compared to the castle, this is kind of like a new build, right? It is, it is <laughs> relatively speaking, 900 years, and then you've got 200 years, exactly. but still. Yeah. It is still an old building. Yeah, it's still, it's beautiful. And, and impressive. Really impressive. And is it still used today? We do use it um, a few times throughout the year, don't Occasional we? Occasional events in the year, one right, or two. Right. But um, it's, yes, it's, it's we, we, want to, we want to really get it, go, get it up and running yeah. um, to be able to use for, for lets. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in need of a bit of um, <gasps> bit love of and work. attention. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> wow. What a renovation project. I couldn't wait to get inside and explore. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is brilliant. Coat of arms, you can see that yep. That's it. everywhere. So this was, you mentioned 1805 was when the building started. Yeah. Which Earl was that then? That would have been the fifth Earl of Barclay fifth in his Earl. lifetime. Right, who had 12 children. And his chil yeah, and his children would have been involved <gasps> in, in, in this. Right. So maybe this is where he escaped to, from the 12 children. Right, from, from yes. quite likely. <laughs> good hiding exactly. place. Exactly, it's a very good hiding place. Oh my goodness. Wow, I see what you mean, that this could absolutely be a holiday let. Yeah, it could, could it? Yeah. I mean, so this is where the bedrooms would be. So ideally, yes. two bedrooms, en suite um, in both, um, and then obviously lovely views. Um, and that's our potential en suite in there. Oh. Not quite ready yet. Oh, let me have a little look. <laughs> Listen, I'm big on renovations. I'm doing one at Mapperton right now. So I'm doing one at a cottage on the estate. So, and, and it's, you know, slow, yeah. Yeah. but steady. Yeah. But this would be a brilliant en suite. Um, well, it's quite here. cool. So we're in one of the turrets now. So there's four kind of circular little turrets to the folly. So we're trying to make the most use of the yes. space and it's also quite cool. Yeah. Obviously because it's a really important building we need to do everything in a really sensitive way Yes. Um, to try and make sure we don't ruin the integrity of yes. what we're trying to achieve here. We haven't quite worked out how it's all going to fit in have we Charles? But, but um, it, it will. It will. <laughs> it will. There's some really lovely claw foot yeah. 
bathtubs, a little bit yeah. smaller, but yeah. they're lovely. Yeah, real exactly. character to suit the body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Oh um, my goodness. And yeah, you don't normally have an arrow slit window in your bathroom. No, so I, think no, I know. But I'm loving all <laughs> of the arrow slit windows. That is for sure. Um, brilliant. Okay, so ensuite bathroom yeah. here. Mm. I can, I'm envisioning it now. Bedroom here. Yeah. Then yeah. you walk through here. Another bedroom. Yep. Yeah. And then, oh, another staircase. And then another staircase. So, go on up. So you go on up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another staircase. This is brilliant. I mean, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm actually speechless. <laughs> this this is mean, the party room. Right, this is the party Definitely. room. But it's incredible because you've got these 360 views. Yeah. And You've got deer park surrounding, I mean the, the, and the light coming in. All right, so Michelle, what are you yeah. thinking for this room? So rough plan of attack, um, this would be the kind of the sitting room, the drawing yeah. room. Um, so people will come up here, there'll be a nice fire going, they'll have lovely views if it's a sunny day, they'll have lots of fancy velvet curtains. If it's not, yeah. they'll feel cosy in here. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for this. And I think trying to just bring it back to trying to use our imagination, what would it have been like when the fifth Earl was enjoying it? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and yeah. kind of have a nod to that. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's the plan. Right, and then I can see two doors on either yeah. side. So turrets again, um, so as we saw in the bathrooms below, and then what we're thinking in here, um, which is a nice little cosy space, is that could be the kind of little hidden away reading room. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, yeah. library-esque kind of yeah. um, reading chair. So you can go and escape there. Um, yes. and have some quiet time with the, with the um, arrow slits and everything else in there as well. Yeah, it's like and probably a drink snug. cabinet of Yeah, dr yeah drink cabinet. Definitely, <laughs> definitely bar, drink. Yes. bar absolutely. <laughs> and then that one across. Probably blue yeah. bathroom so that you so, haven't got to go all the way down to the bottom floor yes. um, when you're kind of up here with all of your stuff. And store, so you can just bring everything at once. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, this is brilliant. I mean, this it's is cool, definitely, it? if it's... I mean, I have to say, one of the best follies I know it's, <laughs> but I've ever been in. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's we love it. It's, it's lovely. It's absolutely brilliant. Well, I would definitely be keen on letting it whenever yeah. that happens. <laughs> yeah. yes. Fingers sign, crossed. <laughs> sign me up. But, it, you know, wonderful that you have, again, this bit of history yeah. that the fifth Earl left, the family, yeah. and it's still yeah. standing and and will be used again and again. And I think that's what's so important, not just this building, but kind of across all estates and all historic buildings, mm. is how do you give them, keep giving them a future? Yes. Because things change, you know, we're no longer having big hunting parties in here, that isn't what it's used for. Right. So how can we make it have a future, yeah. both yeah. financially and to make it stand, and so people can still enjoy it? Because that's yes. what it was built for. Yes. It was yes. built so people could have a really exactly. good time in the deer park. Yes. Um, and that's kind of what we want to keep going, really. Yeah. So. And it's in this wonderful location um, with views on all sides. So let's make the most of it yeah. before it deteriorates. Yeah, more. that's exactly right. Yeah. And well. actually, that's one of the biggest issues that we have here is it was built. It was beautiful. Um, he obviously employed very good craftsmen. The stairs are a really yeah. good example of excellent craftsmanship. Um, however, it's made out of something called mudstone, mm. which is highly inconvenient um, because we're quite exposed up here and it just starts shattering. So one right. of the big costs, and you can't just fix that and then forget about it. So one of the big costs that we have is we have to keep stabilising that stone. Mm -hmm. So whether that's through treatment, whether it's through pointing, whether it's just through making sure it's safe. Yes. So yeah. that's just an ongoing thing that earns no pennies at all, but that yeah. we have to spend quite a bit mm -hmm. of money on to keep, yeah. keep it in good structural order. I hope you are enjoying these wonderful historic house episodes. We put so much time and energy to make sure that these are of high quality productions. And we want to thank our patrons because the reason that we're able to create such beautiful episodes is because of their support. So do consider becoming an American Viscountess patron. Here you'll get behind the scenes, you'll also get American Viscountess merchandise, all episodes are ad free and you get early access to them as well. Christmas cards and it's a wonderful community of like minded people who also love historic houses as much as I do. So do check out the details down below at patreon.com 
forward slash American Viscountess. Charles and Daisy Barkley live out on the estate in a wonderful former hunting lodge with the most amazing views. When I met up with Daisy for coffee, I asked her about living away from the castle itself. When Charles and I married, um, Charles's parents were in the castle. Charles's mother is still in the castle and she's very happy in there. You've been there, it's very warm and cozy. It's a lovely place to live. It's a mm. very safe place to live. Um, so it was never going to be for us for the time being. But we also, <laughs> we have quite a collection of animals and, um, and some quite large dogs, which we love. <laughs> and um, with the castle open to the public so much, I think it's open, I mean, it's open five days a week. Yeah and for a lot of the year, and there's lots of weddings as well, for us to be going in and out, because you can't just open the door and let them into the garden. Right. Because we have inner baileys and outer baileys and great big doors and locks and keys and things, because it's, you it's know, a, maze. a proper castle. Yes. And also, Paul Charles, when he married me, he, he did get this menagerie, which included horses. And, and so, yes, living where we are now, we have a barn with internal stables. We have loads of space. Yeah. And we're just spoilt rotten with places for the horses and the dogs to to roam free. This house though, how long has it been here? What's the history of this house? I and mean, when you look at it, it looks like the most insane place to build a house because you get hit by all the weather all year <laughs> round. And I mean, it is hilarious when the storms hit and we just sort of batten down the hatches, but it was n not built as a, you know, a sort of family home. It was built actually originally as a hunting lodge. Okay. Um, they, they, they believe, I mean, people have studied it. They believe some of it was started in the 1300s. There's some very old stonework, and then right. bits were added, bits fell down, other bits were added. It was built as a hunting lodge for, for hunting deer. And I mean, who knows, maybe Elizabeth I was in this one. Right, Because, yeah. I mean, she, she, came, she came to hunt deer at Barclay, and I think she stayed for a little longer than anyone thought she would and killed most of the deer, but she may have set foot in this place right, as yes. well. I mean, it has probably got a hell of a history. And So then when did you move here? The last tenants were farmers and I mean, poor them, the whole thing was sort of falling down around them and they were very stoical staying here. I think not many people would. It, um, there was no electrics. They had right. occasionally, they, um, I think they had a generator if they wanted a bit of light. And there's also no running water. So like roughing it? No, Proper yeah, roughing it. Fantastic. Um, there was a little wood burner. And I mean, oh we are goodness. sitting here all cozy with underfloor yeah, heating, so warm. Thank living your life away. I think they also rather loved it up here. And, yeah. and then it became just derelict and uh. there was trees growing through where we're sitting now. No. Um, <gasps> this wall, I think, was about to come down and there was falling down pig pens. I mean, it was it was a ruin. Uh, right. And it was virtually about to be raised to the ground. And, um, and someone made the brave decision, thought, actually, let's make it a holiday, that. Okay. Um, which probably would have been amazing. Yes. But Charles and I saw this happening and we thought, actually, maybe we could just mm -hmm. get in there first. Right. <laughs> and and we, we made the decision and, um, and it was the most exciting thing we could have done because to live here is just, is, um, we feel like the luckiest people alive yeah. with this view. Daisy has a successful equestrian career a highlight winning the team bronze in the Beijing Olympics in 2008. But as I know all too well, balancing a separate career with the work that goes into running a historic house is a challenge. I think the peak of my career was around the years when Charles and I married. Um, and I think since then I've, I've been reducing in numbers. I, I think, you know, I'm getting older. And so every year, you know, I seem to be one horse less. Right. And I'm now down to two. Right. And they're right. two lovely horses. And I'm, I'm not out there competing all the time like I used to because they're, I think, you know, as you get older, I want to do more things to help Charles with, with the castle and with projects that are going on there. I can't completely let go because right. yeah. I do like, I mean, all horses are lovely, but competition horses, well trained horses, I just love riding a lovely horse. And I think when, the love is completely gone or I, I lose my nerve. I think that is the time to completely pull the plug. Right, right. Um, I think Charles would be quite keen if I pulled the plug <laughs> soon. <laughs> you married in 2009, is that right? Yes. And then you had, but right that, as you said, that was the height of your career because you had the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Yes. And you had a bronze medal in that. Fantastic. So that Wrong was- Wrong colour. <laughs> 
it's the right color. All oh, medals. At least are, we got something. Yeah, goodness. yeah, yeah. Career. And then after that, you marry Charles. But and you know, when you knew about sort of Barclay Castle, this was going to be where you were, you know, one day going to end up. I mean, for me, it, was, it felt a bit daunting. And I had a career, but also I'm the American. So I was like, oh, what? <laughs> but did you feel that same sort of, I guess, emotion inside? Like, or did you kind of feel like, I'm going to separate the two for now. I'm going to carry on with my career. Yes, very much so. Um, I knew that Charles and the castle, they have an incredibly good team working. They have a very good system. Everything, everything runs like a right. little machine. And yes, there's always going to be um, evolution of that, new things happening. And, um, and I, I, I knew Charles always said that he would love me to get involved doing whatever interested me. And um, we do have a lot of talks about it, what does interest me. I, I'm very fond of the whole, the garden side of it. Yeah. And um, Barclay does have a beautiful garden and, and I think it's just rather, it's rather a wonderful garden. So I would like to get more involved with that. And um, they've also got a new project with a kitchen garden right um, and there's a new restaurant being built and I think we want to try and have a really good project with the kitchen garden maybe also try and encourage a little bit of a I'd love to have a little farmers market going on start yes. small see what the farmers in the area have, have got would like to um, to sell yes and and see where we go from there I, mean, I am going to ask you sort of the million dollar question do you think that there will ever be a time that you will move to the castle. I mean, I, we're very aware that one of the sort of USPs of Barclay is the fact that it has been lived in by the same family since the day it was it yeah, started. Yeah, nearly 900 years. Incredible. And we don't want to be the ones, ones to break that chain. I don't ever see us living in it 24-7 right. because of the animal factor. Yes. We're never going to be without animals. animals. No. <laughs> right, and our right. daughter Mary she has ponies, she's convinced she wants to ride. And, right. And it's just, it's much yep. easier to be out oh. in the middle of nowhere. But I, I do know that, I mean, Charles and I, we'd love to retain a small area where we yeah. can stay. And um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll do it's whatever a, he, yeah, he, yeah. he sees fit. But I, I know, you know, both of us do love, love just being able to take a step back. Yes. And it's almost like leaving the job slightly. And Barclay, Considering how cold and, and dank it would have been once upon a time, you know, as a proper, you know, fortified castle, I think the last Earl put a lot of a lot of money into it to make it an incredibly Incredible. cozy place that it yeah. is, and and it, it's a lovely place to stay, yeah. and to look out of the windows and and see around you and these these wonderful, incredibly thick walls, and it, you know, it's an absolute treat. It really is a treat. And the views from the castle to the gardens are wonderful. I headed out to explore and then caught up with head gardener, Chris Gill. Hello. Hello. I was told I could find you here. Hi. You're, you must be Chris. I'm Chris, yeah. Yeah, I'm Julie. Hi. So Hi, nice Gigi. to meet you. And you. So what are you doing here, really quickly, before I ask you a million so, other questions? So we've got a, uh, a wedding fair on this weekend. Right. Um, this is one of the main areas they bring people down to because um, it's part of the wedding uh, breakfast. They, you know, they bring yes. people down for drinks and things and it's a lovely setting. So I need to really make this really, really tidy. Yes. And get it looking really good so that people are yeah, want to come and have their weddings here. Okay, so what are you snipping away at? Uh, just hydrangeas that have um, died back, so get them looking good for the summer. Right. <laughs> now, I'd love to just pick your brain a little bit, Chris, just yeah. about the gardens here, and especially gardens are so important for, uh, they're an important feature of these historic houses. They definitely are, yeah. Yeah, huge yeah. feature. I mean, people come to see yeah. not just the house, they come to see the gardens as well. well. They would have developed along with the family, so, so you'd have had produce feeding the family and the, all the retainers and then gradually over the years as, the, as it, that gets smaller then it turns into a um, house for visitors for, yes. which needs to look really good so you then design gardens around it more more for that for them you know, the spectacle of the garden yes so tell me a little bit about that so that is the old swimming pool is it yeah 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 so that, I think that was the the last year I'll put that in yeah um, but yeah this swimming pool is five foot deep in the middle <gasps> four foot uh, four and a half foot each end um, which is great for a swimming pool, but not so great for a lily pond. 
Right, right. So we have it now as a lily pond. Okay. Um, and lily's only like really three foot, of, so okay. it makes it a little bit awkward. So does anybody swim in it um, occasionally? No, funnily enough. Hmm. Um, so, so it's, no, it's, even it's people evolved. falling into it doesn't happen very often, funnily enough. So how long have you been working here? That's my next question. 33 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you've really seen a lot of oh, a change. Oh, a lot of changes, yeah. In, yeah. And what, what would you say in particular has been the biggest change that you've seen or you've done yourself in these gardens? Because they're, um, quite, they're quite terraced up. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm the only full-time gardener now, so we have to, you know, it's a lot more mechanized than it used to be. Which right has to be to get work done it has to look good in the summer yes yes so I, I, I absolutely adore roses so every space I get I put more <laughs> roses in <laughs> we've changed quite a lot of the gardens around over the years just because you need to yes um, um, things need to change you know you can't you can't stand still with it no 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 you can't yeah. I I know that from experience of visiting so many historic houses, things have changed so much over the past mm. 100 years, and in particular after the two world wars. But um, yes, was what was it, yeah. you know, prior to that big change, that big shift? Well, it was very labor intensive up, right. up to that point. Yeah, before certainly the first world war, um, there were 33 gardeners uh, would have been working on within oh. in the grounds. Wow. Produce, mostly doing produce for the family and, right. and, and the staff. So I do have to ask this, since you've been here for yeah, yeah. 33 years and you've seen all these changes, but do you have a special part, part in the garden that you just love? To be honest, no. I, 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 the whole, it's a whole. Yes, yes. You know, and, and things change. You know, part of the, the garden will change and that bit will be my favorite bit for that part of the season, maybe. <laughs> and then, or, you know, I mean, there's always going to be parts of the garden that I'll go, I really need to get on with that. I need right, to sort right, that right. out because that's not looking good. So yeah, it does change, definitely yeah, yeah, change. Yeah. I think probably the gun terrace, the one, the one on the top there, right. is possibly my favourite bit. Cause Where the tulips were. Yeah, because yeah. you just get, I do, a, uh, I change that in spring and summer, so I always put the summer um, flowers out there. Um, and that's the first thing people see, so it has to look yes. impactful, it has to look really good. Yeah, it's the first um, thing I saw, and then I was yeah. like, oh, that's so beautiful, I'm gonna come down into yeah. the gardens, so, <laughs> so it, it works. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> and, that, you know, and that gives me, because it's got these beautiful walls giving a lot of heat, it produces a fantastic environment, so you, and you've got safe facing as well. Yes. So you can grow all kinds of, of tender yeah. plants there, which, you know, it's, it's a really good aspect. So yeah, yeah probably it's my favorite yeah. bit, yeah. Oh. What a beautiful garden. I can understand why Daisy wants to get more involved in the gardens, but also in another project at Berkeley, the redevelopment of the late 18th century kitchen garden. Keen to know more, I met up with Charles and Michelle to take a peek. All right, there's a lot of noise going on behind me. Explain to me and to everybody what <laughs> is happening and where we are. This is our massive step change project. So what we're gonna try and do is build a new building. So cafe, visitor center, toilets, shop, wow. basically. Um, and then that will help our visitor business at the castle, but it will also be a really funky place for Berkeley Town to yes. come to and enjoy kind of every day of the year. Right. That's the plan. That is it, but we are in what would have been a big yeah. kitchen garden, is yeah, that right? absolutely. So it would have had, um, there's all glass houses along this back wall. Yeah. So, oh. and you can almost see the remnants down there. So yeah. that's project number two. Um, there would have been, and one of the big bits here, we want to recreate it. So this would have provided a lot of the food for the castle at one point. Yes. Um, so we want to try and recreate that as much as we can. So historic planting, reinstating fruit trees, we'll have peaches and apricots espaliers along the sunny walls. Yeah. Uh, we'll have herb gardens, and then we've still got the veg garden down there, which we will keep and, and kind of keep working on. Right, right. So yeah. Fantastic, no, because when I, when I spoke to Chris, um, your wonderful head gardener, he did uh, tell me a little bit of the story that at one point, you know, 100 years ago, and like all these historic houses, 
they had 33 gardeners and they had this huge kitchen, gar kitchen garden but that and that's what these kitchen gardens were used for they were used yeah. to feed yeah. the castle and the community around yeah. and obviously yeah. we've evolved yeah. um, very much so and we now <laughs> open up our houses to the public yeah. and we want the public to come yeah. in but in a different way exactly yeah. exactly we want to be able to grow things in here that then the caterers can then make into something lovely right yes so that's the plan How Wonderful. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's but this really is a step cool. change for Barclay. You know, this is a really big it project. It really is. Each historic house owner strives to make an impact for the long term benefit and survival of the buildings and estate. So I asked Charles if this is one of those legacy projects for him at Barclay Castle. I think it's one of many things yes. I'd like to see for, you know, that, that people, can look, people can look back on and say, this was in my time and just making the place, you know, improving, adding to what's here. Yes. I'm not really someone I've got to make this big mark. Just lots of things that hopefully stand the test of time. Well, yeah. Well, and you're... the fact it's happening now, I think, is it's the right thing. Yeah. Well, it seems like the right thing. You're incredibly humble because I can tell you, I'm pretty certain <laughs> that people will remember, you know, and, and yeah. they do, that you're the one that sort of uh, decided, hey, yeah. let's do something different here. I do believe it's so important um, and there is a need for something like this. and. Uh, I think it will be very good for the community and for visitors. And we have a lot of people within a few miles of here who may not have come here. We're offering something amazing that is a bowing to, you know, the history of Barclay yeah. and the estate. So yes. I think that's really important. Yeah, it is really important. From a very operational perspective, um, we've got a brilliant, really strong team of guides. But in terms of catering, people don't want a job for six months. We've got to be really realistic. Yes, people yes. want a full-time or a permanent job. Yes. Um, and this way we can hopefully do that, which again gives mm. us kind of a link to the community because you know hopefully they can come yeah. and help and work with us on yeah. it. It's so, very important. It's yeah. really brilliant. So let's talk about timeline yeah. uh, really quickly because of course I, there's so much work going <laughs> uh, behind me. Now, where are you as far as the project goes? What stage are you at? So, and I see you're holding a clipboard yeah, as well. So um, that's just the floor plan of. The whole point of this building is to actually be, this sounds awful from an architect's point of view, is to be really boring. We don't want it to be the focus. The walled garden is the focus. This sits quietly in a right, corner. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be a lot of things. So this is just the layout. And we'll so get this is just the layout. Yeah. 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 So you can see with outside access into toilets, so coach groups, yep. etc., can go there. The biggest kitchen we could mm. get in, but every chef always wants a bigger kitchen. Yep. So we've had to just be practical. Um, and fantastic. then the biggest space. And this is going to have lovely bifold doors on the front. So it's very much an inside out space. You know, you're in a beautiful garden, you're in a sheltered space from the financial point of view, you know, this is a long time coming. This building needs to work really hard. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> so it also needs to be as flexible as possible. Yes. Um, and so that's what that's kind of what we try to achieve. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, listen, you're talking to yeah. the yogi here, and I'm <laughs> exactly. thinking, gosh, yeah. you could do <laughs> yeah. yoga classes here. Yeah. You could do well-being days exactly. here. Exactly. You know, and that's yeah. something that we have done at Mapperton. So yeah. in, we it's, we have a similar layout in our stable block. It looks very similar to this, and yeah. it's our cafe as well. Yeah. But we every Friday. We have yoga. We just yeah. started it this year and yeah. it's doing yeah. tremendously well. And, and yeah. then we have lots of people asking to do different yeah. events and yeah. they're local artisans or yeah. it's crafting or it's yeah. well-being yeah. and they Exactly. Yeah, and I think if we could really link to kind of the food story, yes. we've got food production in the kitchen garden. Yes. We've then got food production on our estate, wider estate with our tenant farmers. Yeah. You know, there's got to be yeah. some synergy there that we yeah. can really, really bring has. in. Yeah. That's what yeah. we're planning for. And that's where we can use it, I think, here. Yeah. I mean, brilliant. I'll come back. I can't wait. <laughs> I've, I've invited myself like three times come already. Anytime. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, <do. laughs> Whenever you fancy. Clearly Whenever. <laughs> And I cannot wait to return to Barclay Castle in the future to see the kitchen garden project up and running and to stay in that fantastic folly out in the Deer Park. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed the visit to Barclay Castle as much as I did. I look forward to seeing you back here for more historic house adventures 
very, very soon. Bye everybody.